I'm Cassandra Walker. And I'm Gilberto Pinela, and you are watching the best of STL TV. As we quickly approach our 25th anniversary, we're going to take a look at some of your favorite moments and our favorite moments from the past two and a half decades. Because we love highlighting the growth and development in our city, you can almost always find us <laughs> on local ribbon cuttings or groundbreaking ceremonies that around St. Louis. so true, Gilberto, so true. That's why today we'll be looking at just <laughs> a few of the memorable events that have made a huge impact on our city. Today, we're looking back at the past eight years, including a new arena, a neighborhood dog park, and the Loop Trolley. Awesome. Yes. We're so excited because we'll be joined by the man behind the Loop Trolley and so many other projects, Joe Edwards himself. Yes. That's all coming up next. In the summer of 2006, St. Louis University broke ground on the second largest building project in the history of the university. The project was driven to success through the years of planning and relentless staff and hundreds of donors. That is so true. And on April 10th, 2008, we were there as student athletes, teachers, and benefactors filled several of the 10,000 plus seats in the new Shavitz Arena to celebrate the grand opening of the new on-campus venue. So let's take a look at some of the highlights from that day. Good afternoon. And welcome to Chaffetz Arena. Welcome to your new home court. I'm Bob Ramsey, and for the last 22 years, I've had the privilege to serve as the voice of the Billikens. But I've been a St. Louis University fan for as long as I can remember. For 80 years, the SLU Athletics Department called West Pine Gym home. To call the building quaint would be kind, but now SLU's athletes, coaches, and staff have a grand new home. So perhaps it's only fitting that as we dedicate this new facility, we also welcome a new leader to SLU Athletics, Chris May. Chris officially started his duties as SLU's athletic director last month. He shares the university's commitment to excellence on and off the court. Please welcome St. Louis University's Director of Athletics, Chris May. Thank you, Bob. And thank you to all of our wonderful supporters who are joining us today here at Chaffetz Arena. I may be new to SLU, but what I do know is this facility will significantly help us deliver that home court advantage that this program has deserved for many, many years. Now with the new locker rooms, state-of-the-art training facilities, sports medicine facilities, there's a space here in addition to our practice gym. It's truly a place we can call home and I'm thrilled to be here. But most importantly, we've got a place for all of our loyal Billiken fans to come and enjoy and I hope you'll, you'll do that. Chaffetz Arena, in my opinion, is the best college basketball facility on campus in the country, and we're glad to have you here joining us to be part of it. Thank you, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm really pleased to join with all of you for this formal opening of the Chaffetz Arena here in Midtown St. Louis. And I stand here today as the mayor of a city, very, very proud and very, very excited about what this facility does and what it means to a great university located right within our borders. A university that has a very strong reputation of quality education and a university that has played a very, very significant role in the renaissance of the city and particularly uh, the, the renovation and the renewal of our midtown in St. Louis. Many, many people who have helped make Chaffetz Arena a reality. But there's one person one person who had the vision and the perseverance to keep the dream of an on-campus arena going when some, I dare say many, doubted it would ever happen. It's an understatement to say that Father Biondi doesn't give up easily. He wanted this facility more than anyone else. As you walk around this fabulous building this afternoon, you should know that Father personally 
had a hand in much of what you'll see today. Thank you for your presence and thank you everyone for your unwavering support for the Chaffetz Arena project. And our commitment to give our students an arena that they can call their own. We also made a commitment to our greater metropolitan St. Louis area. SLU continues to be committed, committed to the revitalization of our Midtown community. I am proud that in its first year, Chaffetz Arena is expected to attract more than 400,000 people to the vibrant businesses, entertainment venues, art museums, galleries, and other resources that surround us. From the Del Mar to the, in the north, 44 on the south, the Central West End on the west, and Sigma Aldridge centers in Wachovia on the east. These visitors will see everything that our rejuvenated community has to offer, and undoubtedly, they will return again and again to see what else is going on in Midtown St. Louis. Cassandra, do you mm -hmm. know that Father Biondi retired as president in 2013 after 26 years, making him the longest serving president in the university's nearly 200 year history? That is amazing. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> the Shavitz Arena continues to draw crowds, hosting over 150 events each year, including concerts, family shows, community events, and of course, SLU men's and women's basketball. Wow, that's a lot of that's stuff. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and a big event just took place. It did. At the arena, and that was the 2016 Men's U.S. Olympic Trials and PNG Gymnastics. Championships. It was phenomenal. Phenomenal. The, the, all of these athletes from all over the world about to go to the Olympics, and they're right here in St. Louis. You know, that's fantastic that our city can accommodate yes. such an event. And I understood right? that the, the athletes that participated were all very pleased. They got to see the city, and they just love the shape of arena. And they're going to come back. Of course they will. Especially when we host the Olympics right here in St. Louis. Oh, we got to be a part of that. Yes. Have you been to the Chaffetz Arena? I have, and I love it. Oh, it's I, wonderful. I was there for a concert recently, mm -hmm. and uh, I just really enjoyed it. Yes, very, yeah. very needed. And right in the center of the city, so it's very accessible, and it's yes. just like fantastic. I enjoy going there for any events that they have. The basketball, of course, our family loves that, but anything else that comes anything. to St. Louis, so easy to get to. Yes. I love it. The Shavitz Arena certainly has made a big impact on St. Louis, but we've learned over the years that projects of all sizes can benefit <laughs> residents' lives. And Cassandra, in 2009, residents of the Benton Park West neighborhood gather for their official opening of the new dog park. And you know, that is so important to me, to have a yes. dog park, a place to take your dog. After years of planning, not only did the residents finally have a neighborhood dog park, but they were also able to breathe new life to Pocket Park, once known for criminal activity. You know that Bill Bird, the president of the Benton Park West Neighborhood Association, greeted the crowd and spoke about how the dog park came to fruition. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So on any project, you have that initial push, the initial passion. Then the next step is that planning and really coming and realizing if from a, a fiscal situation and even if it's going to happen. So we have Rebecca Durst, who was very uh, in, involved and actually was the architect for this project, going to talk about that next phase. Hello, um, I'm Rebecca Durst. and. Um, when, when Gina started this um, about three or, I thought it may have been even four years ago, I, I don't know, maybe it just seemed that long. Um, I remember sitting in her living room and we, we poured over what, what location to pick and we looked at probably about four locations and we ended up with this one. It, it used to be Pocket Park and um, together with Craig Schmidt, we uh, managed to arrange and improving the lighting. Uh, we took care of some trees. It was, there were more trees in the area and we took some of those out and we lifted the canopy of the trees so that more light could get into the space. Um, the fence was put in, we put it in at this angle so we'd still have a, 
part of the park that could still be open to the neighborhood. We didn't want to steal the whole thing for the dogs. And um, we left the sidewalk that was already there and just utilized that. Um, but we did fill it. There used to be a tree where that watering station is. And then we uh, put the waste cans around the park for uh, tidiness. And uh, I believe we added some park benches, some were already there, and then um, there's also a fire hydrant for the dogs to christen if they're into that sort of thing. Um, and, but there's still more plans. You know, we're, we've talked about maybe um, seeing if this fence works for the smallest of small dogs and maybe putting something around the bottom for smaller dogs. Um, plantings around the park, we may continue to do that. And so if you're interested, sign up and there'll be a place for you to help out if you're so inclined. And the last person I would like to um, make note of that's uh, um, one of our official people is uh, we have Jeanette Mott Oxford, who is um, our representative, one of our representatives in Jefferson City. Jeanette. Thank you, Bill. I have a, a courtesy resolution from the House of Representatives noting this special day. It reads, whereas it is a special pleasure it is with special pleasure that the members of the Missouri House of Representatives pause to recognize the grand opening of the Benton Park West Neighborhood Association Dog Park, which will be held on April 25th, and whereas the grand opening celebration will feature events for both furry friends and humans alike, and whereas the event is being held to kick off the birth of the new Benton Park West Dog Park, which grew from an idea nearly nine years ago to a reality that promises to be fun for canines of all shapes and sizes, and whereas the mission of the Benton Park Neighborhood, Benton Park West Neighborhood Association is to enhance and strengthen the neighborhood and its residents by promoting beautification, commerce, communication, diversity, and safety. And whereas the Benton Park West Neighborhood Association makes efforts to support, renew, and sustain Benton Park West's unique human and physical resources, serving as a voice for the neighborhood and helping to ensure quality living. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of the Missouri House of Representatives 95th General Assembly, Join in extending our most hearty congratulations to Benton Park West Neighborhood Association Dog Park upon the resplendent occasion of its grand opening. And this is signed by myself and Speaker of the House, Ron Richard. Right. <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> now I'd like for uh, our Alderman Craig Schmidt to come forward and uh, for a few remarks. This dog park symbolizes both the people friendliness of Benton Park West and its animal friendliness. It is a great amenity for our extended families, which include our pets. It is also cleaning up this corner, which I am sorry to say for a long time was a problem. It's now cleaned up with the fencing and landscaping, but for too long folks were engaged in criminal activity from these very same benches and this un unattended open space. There are so many people to recognize, and I think this is the most important part of what I want to say today, who have contributed to making this day possible. And because I will undoubtedly miss someone, let me begin by thanking all of you for helping to make this day possible and for your participation in this event. I thank you very much. You know, Gilberto, the benefits of a dog park, I think it's just vast because people have a place to exercise their dogs, especially if they live in condos or apartments. And they, it helps the dog also to socialize with other That's dogs, true. too, which yeah. is very important. It is. Well. So you, do you ever take Benny, your dog, to a dog park? To, not yet. Not yet. Because he wants to be the king of the hills. So. Oh, <laughs> he has to still learn <laughs> so, social skills. I, I spend the whole day following him, going like, come right. on, stop our Gotcha. Thing. But it's still good that we have it. Yes. The dog park. It's Absolutely. Beautiful. That's a wonderful I'm piece. Glad. Well, joining us now is a man whom we've had the pleasure of interviewing multiple times over the years. And we have been with him on several locations for grand openings and groundbreakings from all over the loop to downtown. Absolutely. And that man is none other than Joe Edwards. Joe, thanks for joining us. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. We're so happy to have Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Thank you. 25 years. 25 Can years. Can you believe yes. it? Yep. How long have you been here, Joe, in St. Louis? Um, all my life. I was really? born and raised here. I love St. Louis. So what was then? You were born and raised here. Obviously, they didn't have the loop when you were born and raised here. What made you decide to create it? Well, I, and 
when I opened Blueberry Hill, I didn't know what I wanted to do for sure, and I figured, well, if I open a place and program the jukebox with my record collection uh -huh. of 30,000 records, wow. then 30, unbox all the pop culture memorabilia I collected, and I just hoped that people would enjoy it and feel comfortable going there and kind of putting their troubles away and enjoying life for a couple hours. And you're talking about vinyl, right? All the records were vinyl? Yes. Yeah. So, wow. so then it, it kind of like died down, but then it went ahead and picked up again. How do you feel about millennials loving vinyl now? <laughs> I, th I think it's great. And, and stores like Vintage Vinyl in the Delmore Loop yes. are, are reaping the benefits of, uh, from that, and I, I think it is wonderful. That means my collection is still worth something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then what gave you the inspiration for the Flamingo Bowl? I've always wanted to do something downtown. I'm one of those people that believes in a strong downtown core for the whole metropolitan area, and I have not done anything, so I did that one. I still focus on the Delmore Loop the most, but I did that one downtown to create a, a place that had a, a New York 1930s, 1920s yes. vibe mm -hmm. with that Miami color scheme oh. and <laughs> party, party, party. And we yeah. like that. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So how do you feel about this mega downtown that we're thinking about creating with Clayton and like the loop is right there in the middle and now you're doing the trolley so uh, it's going to connect it all. I, th I think the central corridor is the key to the long-term future of, of St. Louis in general. I'm glad to see all this activity taking place. And for the loop, uh, you, you can go from Clayton to the loop to the Central West End to Midtown, all the way downtown. And when that's solid as can be, everything keeps branching out south and north. And we'll be there again as wow. a great city. And that's if you amazing. get tired of going back and forth, you uh -huh. can stay at the Moonrise. The Moonrise Hotel, right. <laughs> of course. What was your inspiration for that? Well, I, I always felt that the, the Loop needed a, a good hotel, and it was real important to me that it be an independent hotel, unlike anything else in the United States. Not connected with any reservation system in any other hotel, and, and, and have the Loop quirkiness. So I built the Moonrise. Moon is written about more than anything other than the word love, I think, in songs and poetry. Mm -hmm. and then I created the world's largest man-made ro rotating moon on top so that people can watch it go through its <laughs> rotation 24-7. And uh, people love it from all over the country. I mean, they, they, so they just creative. enjoy it. And you know what I love about the Moonrise is that What's you that? have the suites. You have like, yes. John, Josephine, uh, Josephine Baker's suite. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and which other ones you have? Uh, Red Fox, also Vincent Price, Betty Grable, St. Louis Walk of Fame honorees. There are 10 special suites honoring great St. Louisans. Wow. And then they're, they're just, uh, it, it's so nice to, we just redid the whole restaurant and, and, uh -huh. and open the, the Eclipse restaurant. And uh, people should come see that too, a new menu and, and as well as physical uh, changes that are magnificent. And added a whole new room on the rooftop. Yes. The twilight room that's indoor, outdoor. So you can come day or night, all year round, cold or hot. It's air conditioned in the summer, heated in the winter and see the whole view, the panoramic it's view beautiful. of St. Louis. I it happened is. to be at an event not too long ago with the Vital Voice, they did an event for, um, which is a testament to your inclusion, to your emphasis on inclusion and diversity. And uh, you hosted an event for the LGBTQI community uh, here at the Moonrise, and it was fabulous. We were great. proud to have hosted that, and the staff was great, Vital Voice, and the whole community is, is great. And that's what makes that part of St. Louis great. It really is diverse in a real way, a grassroots way. And more communities around the metropolitan area need to kind of join in. Get very in. eclectic, too. Yes. I mean, you, you, you can go three or four or five times. In one week, and still see something you didn't see before. That's uh -huh. the beauty I of it. I love it. And now we spoke about the Flamingo Bowl, and we spoke about the Moonrise. <laughs> so now let's go to something else that's so exciting. We're going to take a look now at a few remarks from you and Mayor Slay at the groundbreaking ceremony last year of the trolley. Yeah, the, the Delmore Loop, much like what the new loop trolley will do connects us all. It connects the city and to the county and the university city. It connects people of different races, backgrounds, religions, and interests. It is a destination location and one of the greatest melting pots of our entire region. The Del Mar Loop is not only one of the best streets in St. Louis, it is also one of the great streets of America. Well, it's now time for the official groundbreaking of the Loop Trolley Transit Project. Construction will begin on the roundabout right at the street in two weeks, but we thought it meaningful to hold the first dig right here on the city-county border, symbolizing the great collaboration 
between all the governmental and neighborhood entities. So thanks everyone for coming today and thanks to the Museum of Transportation for lending us their 80 year old vintage trolley bell. And now away we go. <laughs> the trolley ding 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 went the bell sing 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 went my heart string from the moment I saw it I fell chug 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 went the motor bump 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 went the brake thump 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 went my heart strings when he smiled I could see that car shake he tipped his hat and took a seat and said he hoped he hadn't stepped upon my feet. He asked my name, I held my breath. I couldn't speak because he scared me half to death. Gilberto, I mean a trolley. I feel a like trolley. we're in San Francisco. And I feel like, you know, meet me in St. Louis again. All right. That's <laughs> clang, so true. Clang, clang with, with the, the trolley. trolley. Ring, <laughs> ring, ring, ring with the bell. <laughs> I love that. Oh, that look is at nice. that. I'm not wearing the hat. Can I wear the hat? Sure. Oh, oh right. that looks See? great. There you go. Ah. I can be a conductor. Handsome. That's right. You Handsome. Be, That's right. You know, I can be a conductor. Tell us about this idea. This is a huge undertaking, Joe. Yes. It is. It's, it's a wonderful thing for St. Louis, and it's a prototype for how to connect other neighborhoods to each other and to Metrolink. It's the future of cities in our country, not just St. Louis or even large cities, but small cities too. And it means so much to young people in particular, but also retirees, to be able to live around good public transit, electric transit, clean electric transit. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's, it's uh, the number of 20-year-olds that had driver's licenses 20 years ago only or 91% did, only 74% today do. So really? organically, that's what's happening in America. And we're on top of it here in St. Louis. And I, I wow. hear also that the, because the trolley is going to be so important for the future, because the Generation Z mm -hmm. will be the first generation that will not drive. That's right. Really? Either they will have automatic driving cars uh -huh. or they'll take the trolley. Right. Wow. Yes. And it's transforming this 2.2 mile route down Del Mar and across to Bolivar. De Bolivar is going to be gorgeous by yes. the time fall occurs. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty exciting. I'm excited happening. about the new concert venue that that trolley is going to take oh, you sure. to right there next to the pageant. A fixed track trolley system attracts investment like it does in New Orleans or other cities, mm -hmm. and it's happening right now. I'm building a new concert venue for St. Louis called Del Mar Hall, an 800 capacity concert venue right next to the pageant. So bands and agencies around the United States are very excited. It's going to put St. Louis even more on, this, on the music map as far as reputation. And, and they can go from Blueberry Hill at 340 capacity in the Duck Room to the 800 capacity Del Mar Hall to the 2000 capacity pageant. And then if they're really super successful, on to the other venues like in St. Louis. That is yes, wonderful. You bet. So, Everyone needs a Joe Edwards. Every city does. But you're ours. Do you just wake up in the morning and go, hmm, here's another idea, and start sketching out? How does this all come together for it you? It usually Joe? happens late at night. Um, oh. No, no, no. <laughs> Sometimes early in the morning. No, but I just, I, I figure, too, the Loop needs a 24 hour diner to make it a true 24 7 neighborhood. So mm -hmm. I created the Peacock Loop Diner. Oh, and it is open yes. 24 hours. And I have collections in there of Peacock memorabilia and diner ephemera. So it's, it's a nice place to get a meal, breakfast, or, or you know, burgers, whatever it is, 24 hours a day. The menu is always available. Wow. So and the loop there, is coming along. So, Definitely. Joe, was there ever a time that you felt like, okay, this is overwhelming? Mm. You know, I am going to give up because the, whether it's the government or the community is fighting against me, how, were, how have you been able to stay on top of it and then keep giving more and more and more and more because you continue expanding. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I feel I'm as idealistic, idealistic as I was in my 20s and I just stay focused that way and I don't listen to all the naysayers because St. Louis needs more and more positive things and it's so hard to build things up positively so I just ignore the naysayers and just keep going forward. And we need more and more of that in St. Louis because this is a great city. And you know, well, I, lo I love the Walk of Fame because it's something that, you know, yes. we see it in other, uh, in the, in, yep. of course, in California. So for that, you keep adding 
to the Walk of Fame, which of course that means St. Louisans are doing things in the world. Right. What What is the uh, criteria for that? Like for instance, Gilberto, I was just wondering when, when we get our <laughs> when we get our star. <laughs> I'm teasing. No, I know. I, I, kept it, I kept it very straightforward. Um, you just had to either have been born in St. Louis or had formative or creative years here. And the second uh, criterion is that you had to have a national impact on our cultural heritage. So people like Maya Angelou, who was born in St. Louis, mm -hmm. is in the Walk of Fame. Red Fox is in the Walk of Fame. Mm -hmm. uh, Chuck Berry, the father of rock and roll. Mm -hmm. Betty Grable, the great actress and pinup beauty. Um, uh -huh. uh, not that that matters. No, just, um, uh, That's okay, you can say it. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, no, but it's just great. I mean, they're broadcasters and actors yes. and literary people and educators. It's, it's, it's a marvelous way to show the rest of the country how great St. Louis is Absolutely. and how much we've contributed on a national level, level to our heritage of our country. Yes. More than any other city, there are a few eastern cities maybe that are pretty close, but none from St. Louis West, and we're, yeah. we're the best. And I'm Absolutely. so proud that you have been such a big supporter of Chuck yes. Berry and, and all that work until recently. Yes. So, how yeah. is he doing? He's doing, he's doing well. He's relaxing right now. He played concerts 209 consecutive months at Blueberry Hill Woo! in a legendary concert series that's been written about in Rolling Stone and yes. featured in the BBC in England mm -hmm. and all over the world. And, um, and through his 88th birthday, he'll be 90 this October 18th. Wow. Oh, my goodness. And now he's just taking a break and just enjoying it. And that's good for him. That is. That's awesome. yep. I wonder how much performing and being around people and doing what he does for a living has helped to add to his longevity. I, I think it. I think it did add to it a lot. And, and he just loves connecting with an audience. Yes. And and he works as hard as James Brown used to work um, <laughs> at connecting with an audience and putting forth a good show. And 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 he never left St. Louis. He stayed here. Other artists left and made a bigger mark in New York right. or L.A. But he just did life on his own terms and mm -hmm. is still here. And still here and he's still got the energy to yes. keep going yep. too. And yep. you keep bringing people back to St. Louis, Joe. Thank you so much, Joe. Oh, it was always a thank pleasure. You. Isn't you. Gilberto? Always a pleasure. And always I want to be a conductor. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Honorary <laughs> conductor. <laughs> Honorary. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's coming our way. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. <laughs> it is. I'm going to be there. Thank you so much, Joe. Troy. Yeah, we'll be there. Well, we hope you enjoyed this look back for more on our 25th anniversary, check us out on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and of course, Instagram. Instagram. And keep it course right here on STL TV and Experience St. Louis. Stay tuned for more great programming as we take a look back at more great moments from the past 25 years at STL TV. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>